Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith, and welcome to my preview of WrestleMania 32. Tonight in Arlington, Texas, at AT&T Stadium, the WWE superstars will blow the roof off of that place and show everybody that they put on a show like no one else. Nobody, no other company out there, no other sports entity, I believe, touches WWE. Not the Super Bowl, not the World Series, not UFC, nothing. And yes, you can say that, oh, well, you know, I don't really care for WWE because it's all fake. For you to say that you don't like wrestling because it's not real is the same way that somebody would say, oh, I don't like Star Wars because there's no such thing as a C-3PO. You're going for the entertainment, and they don't fall short on that. While it's very challenging to come up with exciting plots and storylines and arcs throughout years upon years upon years, they keep doing it. And one of the things that completely fascinates me about WrestleMania is it's gone from this, from this, you know, let's risk everything we've got venture back in um, 1985 in Madison Square Garden to an event where cities are bidding on it like it's the Olympics. And why are they bidding on it? Because it brings hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue to whatever city hosts it. I remember being at last year's WrestleMania and just thinking to myself, what an amazing spectacle this is. It's just phenomenal. Had the opportunity of meeting people from Australia, from Asia, from Europe. It was just amazing. And even though, you know, we might come together and might not have a lot in common, that one common denominator, we all love the WWE. Um, I've talked before about the fact that I think the WWE does a great job for, for the communities that it goes to as well. I mean, from, from their fantastic work with the Make-A-Wish programs, to um, uh, anti-bullying, to reading, to getting out to vote, the WWE is very active in the community in a very positive way. So when you take aside, you know, the whole wrestling storyline aspect of it from a business standpoint, from, a, from the point of view of a business helping out the community and trying to make the world around it a better place, again, you'd be very hard pressed to find a company that does it a lot better than the WWE does. Um, so I've supported WWE for many years and I will continue to do so. Again, I think it's great entertainment. So let's talk about tonight. Um, first of all, going into tonight, to be perfectly honest with you, as you can see, I am not in Arlington, Texas. Um, I am not as excited about tonight's card as I was last year's card. And I think a big part of that had to do with injury. So let's talk about last year's card really quickly. It was exciting in the sense that you had Sting wrestling in a WWE ring for the first time. You had Degeneration X coming face to face with NWO for the first time. Seth Rollins uh, cashing in on the money in the bank. Undertaker making his return against Bray Wyatt. Um, to say nothing of the fact that Ronda Rousey and The Rock came in and had that epic showdown with uh, Triple H and Stephanie and pretty much stole the show. It was a fantastic event from beginning to end. And it would be hard pressed for any WrestleMania to be better than that. Now the challenge with this year's WrestleMania I find is that there are a lot of wrestlers that are injured. So we've got John Cena who's injured, Seth Rollins who's, in, who's injured, Sting who got injured and unfortunately had to retire. Um, we've got one of the Wyatts that just recently got injured. So there's a lot of different injuries which I think had the WWE scrambling to kind of, you know, fit things in, in different avenues. One of the challenges with the WWE I find is that because you've got the three hour Raw and then you've got the two hour SmackDown, their two television pro their two weekly television programs, a lot of the a lot of the matches that they're showing us tonight, we've seen them before. So for example, the Usos and the Dudleys. Well, we've seen that interaction for, for so long now, and now we're going to see it on, on the big event. So for me, that match might not carry the same level of excitement. So that's when you start to think, okay, well, how are they going to use different people like John Cena? How are they going to use different people like The Rock that they've, that they've been advertising? Oh, he's going to be there, not apparently in a match, but he's going to be there. So is it going to be a run-in situation? I'm not going to go through every single match and do a prediction, but I will tell you a couple of the, the two big matches that I'm really looking forward to. We'll start with Triple H and Roman Reigns. Um, Shawn Michaels is always at WrestleMania in some capacity. I don't think it would be a, I don't think it'd be um, uh, a far gone conclusion to think that uh, that that he couldn't be involved in some form or fashion. Perhaps a run in, perhaps being in Triple H's corner. Um, I could definitely see Roman Reigns uh, tasting sweet chin music at some point tonight. But how about this for a twist? How about Seth Rollins running out, of course not in a money in the bank capacity, but running out and costing Roman Reigns the title like he did last year. That could happen also. Um, will John Cena play into it? I'm not sure. I, I have a hard time seeing all these people involved, but not getting involved, if you know what I mean. 
Uh, of course, the big match that everyone seems to be talking about is The Undertaker and Shane McMahon. Now, if I had said to you last year that The Undertaker would be fighting, would be fighting excuse me, Shane McMahon at WrestleMania, you'd think I was crazy. And again, I think that kind of bowls into injuries because if Sting was wrestling, you have to think that the dream match of Sting and The Undertaker finally would have come to fruition. Unfortunately, many years later than most of us would have liked, but it still would have come to fruition. Um, with, with Sting obviously not able to compete, they brought Shane McMahon in. And again, Shane McMahon is not a poor substitute. We have seen the highlight reels at nauseum, but Shane McMahon will put his body on the line. And in a, in a Hell in a Cell type of environment, he's going to have to put his body on the line. I think of this match and I think of the, the, you know, the, the, impl the implications that are surrounding it. So if, if Shane McMahon wins, he gets control of Raw. But if um, Vince McMahon wins, then he keeps control. But then Vince McMahon, of course, has said some derogatory things lately about The Undertaker. So the way that I kind of see this playing out is a couple of ways. I see one aspect. I can see all the lights go out. And then the lights come back up and then the Wyatts are there because quite frankly, I don't believe the Wyatts have a match at WrestleMania. So that's one thing I could see happening. Another thing I could see happening is um, Undertaker just absolutely annihilating Shane, but still having like still pulling Shane's body over top of his to get the cover because of course Undertaker doesn't want to be referred to as anybody's bitch. Um, it would be very difficult for me to think of this being the Undertaker's last WrestleMania match. Um, just um, again, he doesn't work a full schedule. It would be a very sad thing to, to, to happen. But again, I'm still one of those people that thinks it was a very sad thing for The Undertaker to lose the streak to Brock Lesnar. I would have preferred he, he lost it to somebody who was more passionate about the business. Um, Undertaker is, an, uh, is the consummate professional, understanding the best thing for the business, go out on your back, put somebody else over. I just would have preferred it would have been somebody who was more passionate about the business. And if you've seen uh, Brock Lesnar's interview with Stone Cold Steve Austin, then you know that he's not passionate about this business and it's all about the money. Um, at the end of the day, this is going to be uh, a very enjoyable event. Will it be as enjoyable as last year? Again, it could be going into it. I don't think it will be, but we'll see. You never really leave a WrestleMania and think, wow, that sucked, because they don't. There's just different levels of, of excitement that you get with them. Um, this one, again, there's so many question marks and there's so many intangibles, and maybe that's the whole plan that the WWE has. Instead of it making it somewhat predictable, having it unpredictable so you can come into it and enjoy it more. What are you guys looking forward to seeing tonight at WrestleMania? Are there any big scoops and, um, you know, uh, spoilers or pieces of excitement that you're looking for? Let me know. Uh, CFL underscore fan on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Witty Whittier and Witty Whittier.com. Appreciate you taking the time to check this out and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.